Choose to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never, never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, and you know I'm always delighted to be joined by Mr. Ricky Burns himself. Ricky, we're here in Glasgow. You've just had one of your fighters and uh, James McGibbon have a great performance there. Um, yeah, what I saw today was lightning fast hands, good feet, southpaw, looks dangerous. I mean, he's one to watch. And he can hit with anything. <laughs> um, that draw, obviously, James has just uh, come over and started training with me. Um, obviously, having him on the pads and that, but look at the the joy to watch him sparring alongside, but obviously the next fight he'll be basing himself over here full time. But I say we're saying to Jason, his manager, the other day, I'm like, he can hit, man. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't actually realise that when you're in, up that close when he's in that ring, when he's landing these shots, the thud. Um, listen, great amateur career, seven undefeated. Um, very, very good fighter. So, no, I'm looking, for, I'm looking forward to the journey. Well, that's just going to be an exciting journey because, like you said, he, he can hit. And I was sitting basically six feet away from you on one of the tables and there were, there were shots that were landing. But you're building a nice little stable. We, I want to talk about the gym because I was at your gym. You've opened up your, the grand opening of your gym today and it looks absolutely fantastic. So we will talk about that. So you're creating a space now where the wealth of knowledge and, you, like I said, you're probably sick and tired of hearing this three-weight world champion and what you've did in the sport. But you have done a lot in the sport, Ricky, and it's time to pass on that knowledge down to this younger generation. You've got James, you've got Tyler there, but... You've got to build on a good little stable now with that gym. So talk to me about the fighters you're, you're, you've got and what hope, maybe fighters you're hoping to bring on and the gym itself. I've got a few pros that I'm training, obviously. The training the James, Tyler, um, get Charlie Doig, Paul Keane, uh, Sean Lazzarini. Fingers crossed we're going to get some news about him soon. Uh, but he's itching at the bit to get back at it. But, you know, uh, but with the five of them, you know, my hands are full. Um, and like I said, look, when it comes to the training side, I've all said I would love to get my own gym, but that's now it now it's set up. Like the last couple of weeks, I've kind of like, took myself away from everything, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, but now I've said to them, like for next week, everything's back to normal. We can start getting in a routine the way we were. Um, and you know, once we get, once we get we get back to normality, um, all these boys will be fine. And they're all itching at the bit to get back in there. So. See, the scary thing is, Ricky, they're all around about your weight, so are you still putting them gloves and that gum shield and that head guard? Are you going to give them a few rounds? I'm going to put it on hold, right? <laughs> um, so they've all got fights coming up, so I'm going to concentrate on them, get them out of the way, maybe possibly get Christmas and New Year out of the way, um, and then we'll, we'll, see what, we'll see what happens. But that's never the, say never. That, never. That's what I was going to say, because my post-fight interview with you after the Will Lemon fight, I asked you if it was done, your, your wife was sitting there probably eyeballing you, and you were like, that, never say never. Um, are those itchy knuckles ever going to leave you? Is there going to be a time when you think, nah, I'm done, I, feel, I can't do this no more? No, never, honestly. <laughs> Drop. I think any, day that, any boxer that retires, they've always got that wee bit in them, the way I come back and fight. And Drop, to be fair, after that last one, Amanda was going off for nothing, saying no chance <laughs> in that. But she's actually not, she's not said, not went as mad, but she's not really said no yet. So, mm. again, I think it could happen, maybe. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm, I'm excited because obviously I'm, I'm a biased jock and I'm always trying to bring up the, the boxers and stuff like that. I mean, I see young Tyler Jolly there who's shadow boxing. He's got itchy knuckles himself. And the fighters that you're bringing on as well, Charlie Doig and Paul Keane, who's a little bit more established in the, 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 the professional ranks. I'm excited. I'm excited for your stable. I'm excited for your gym. And I'm excited for you past down his nose. So I'm, I'm going to follow the journey and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So you must be absolutely buzzing. I know, Joe. Well, obviously, next week uh, we will be getting back at it. But... You know, see when you are, like, obviously the boy, the boys I'm training, like, they're all very, very good, like, top level amateur fighters. Do you know what I mean? Um, and when you're in, and like, I've always said that like, when, when when I'm training them, it's like just showing showing them wee things and that. I don't want to change anything about them. Mm -hmm. I want to just drill all the basic stuff into them. And you know, if they pick up one or two things every fight, do you know what I mean? By the time it comes, gets further down the line in their careers, um, that's when I could pay them in good stead. Um, but they all know what they all know what I expect to them when we're in camp and we've got dates and I heard you talking to them say talking mentioning fitness. Mm. Um, none of them will ever be doubted for their fitness. Yeah, well, listen, if you're their coach, that's a fact. I know that for a fact. Uh, yeah, I want to ask. This is probably a question I need to probably ask in, a, in a, a few years' time. But obviously, you've won a world title for yourself as a fighter. Um, 
what would it mean to you to win a world title as a coach with one of these fighters that you've got here? Joe, I've told I've told them all already. Every one of them's more than capable of winning a world title. Um, obviously, when I, when I'm training them, I've got high expect not high expectations. That's putting pressure on them all. You know what I mean? But I expect them all to do well. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I and I do expect them all to go out there and, and compete at world level. One final one for me then, Ricky. Uh, we've yet to have a spa. You offering me out? When, when, right. <laughs> so, next couple of weeks, right, we'll make this happen, right? The uh, new rigging that's all built in the gym, we will make this happen. Oh, I don't know if I'm looking forward to it. No, to be honest, I thought they were going to say, nah, I'm, I'm past it, but listen, I'm, I'm two rounds. I'm good for two rounds, Ricky, right? Never say never. Say never. never say never. You're fucking right. Never say never. Listen, Ricky, Cheers, thank you man. so much, brother, and uh, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Sorted. Cheers, mate. You need to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never shut up, Harry. It uh, must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 